You didn't believe me, did you? Just a few weeks ago, I reported on the destruction of statues and federal monuments and the so-called cancel culture, which is a result of the anti-American programming this generation has been fed in public schools and anti-Christian universities. And now, a few days ago, at least five or six churches have been attacked by vandals or arsonists in several different American cities. A 24-year-old in Florida even set fire to a Catholic church while people were inside. In Boston, another vandal set fire to a statue of the Virgin Mary. And I bet you didn't hear about this in the media. I didn't think so. I'm David Fiorazzo, and this is Christ and Culture. Remember we told you about Sean King, a leader in the Black Lives Matter movement who told the radicals that statues of Jesus Christ are a gross form of white supremacy and must be taken down? He didn't stop there. He also declared the Virgin Mary and white followers of Jesus also to be destroyed. And apparently these marching orders were taken seriously when King told his disciples not to stop with America's founders, presidents, and abolitionists. He said, stained glass windows of white Jesus and his mother and their white friends are tools of oppression, you know, racist propaganda, and they should all come down. Well, here we are now. The destruction to churches comes weeks after rioting that followed up Black Lives Matter protests in several cities across the country. Do you really think this is all about racism or is it the heart of mankind? It's clearly a sin problem, not a skin problem. And by the way, this might be a good time to get security cameras at your church if it doesn't have any. One church in San Diego, Calvary Baptist, is being investigated by the police department's Metro Arson Strike Team. What's ironic is Calvary Baptist is a historically black church. In Fort Worth, Texas, Bible Way Church of God was broken into and robbed last weekend, and the suspect destroyed all the mirrors in the church. One vandal up in New York painted the word idol in graffiti on Our Lady's statue at Cathedral Prep School in Queens. In Los Angeles County, San Gabriel Mission Church was set on fire July 11th, destroying parts of the 250-year-old iconic structure, which was founded by St. Junipero Serra in 1771. Though he was a staunch defender of the rights of Indians, statues of Serra have been recently destroyed in many towns throughout California. Just up north in Fremont, California, vandals were charged with a hate crime after they attacked Mission San Jose Church. They painted swastikas and left anti-Catholic comments on gravestones at the campus of Providence College. But the media's silence on the Ocala, Florida attack on parishioners is the most disturbing. Faithwire reported that Stephen Anthony Shield was arrested and charged with attempted murder, arson, burglary, and evading arrest. It began Saturday at the Queen of Peace Catholic Church in Marion County, Florida, where a 24-year-old assailant drove his vehicle into the place of worship during a morning mass and poured gasoline in the foyer and set the building on fire before he drove off. So, uh, one or two of these, none of these considered hate crimes? But the thing is, most Americans haven't heard a peep about this rash of violence because none of the major news networks have even mentioned it. Ready for, for a few numbers? According to the Media Research Center, out of 270 minutes on NBC, ABC, and CBS nightly news coverage for last Friday through Sunday, July 10th through 12, not one second was spent on these violent anti-Christian attacks. That includes the complicit silence from the God-haters at CNN and MSNBC. So, what might be just one reason for the silence? Think about it. How can the media, in good conscience, encourage left-wing activists, I mean protesters, to express themselves by vandalizing property, burning things, destroying symbols of American history, and then report on some of the hate spilling over into churches? That would make them look bad, wouldn't it? Liberal elites either support the assaults on the Christian faith, they're too spineless to speak up, or they simply cannot admit they were wrong for stoking the flames of recent protests. 
This rise in hate crimes against followers of Jesus will most likely continue because of the false narrative being regurgitated today that we are an evil nation due to the Bible and the Constitution we were founded upon, right? Well, Jesus warned his followers that people would be divided over the truth of the gospel, that the pathway is narrow that leads to eternal life, but the pathway to destruction is wide. When we are persecuted for his name, it's a badge of honor. Jesus also said this, If the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, the world hates you. The Bible says believers in Christ are citizens of heaven. So we have dual citizenship. But those without God are without any lasting hope. And though they often act out in anger, their real beef is with Jesus. Don't take it personally. As long as the media and political leaders choose not to address these stories, attacks on believers and churches and lawlessness will increase just like the Bible predicts. Without a change of heart that only God can give, disrespect will increase toward all human life and the true heritage of Western civilization. God bless you and keep speaking the truth about things that matter.